Hey everybody, and welcome to the final episode of Mullet Over. Since it's the last one, I wanted to go over my favorite deck of the entire year so far, Ping Mage. No Ranathal, no Kel'Thuzad, no Denathrius, but just the good old-fashioned list that Fury Hunter won the most recent Masters Tour with. In a world full of 40 card lists, you need a really good reason to give yourself only 30 health to work with, and Ping Mage absolutely does. Several reasons, in fact. The most obvious is to find your ping package more consistently. Wildfire, Reckless Apprentice, Mordrush, and of course, Magister Dongrasp, who is an absolute force to be reckoned with even after the nerf to the hero power. It's no surprise to see Wildfire kept in every matchup, and Dongrasp as well. I'd argue the second reason Ping Mage values consistency of draw so much is also to hit a strong early curve. Shivering Sorceress, Amplified Snow Flurry, and most of all Frostweave Dungeoneer are great keeps because they allow you to fight for board and push early damage. This is crucial before you eventually transition to a pure damage-based game plan, especially against Ramp Druid, one of your toughest matchups. Arcane Intellect is also a good keep in slower matchups like Ramp Druid and Control Shaman. It's usually not better to play than Dungeoneer on curve, but it's still important to keep resources high and get your only arcane spell in the pool for Magister Dawngrasp. More so than the mulligan, the tough part about Ping Mage is knowing when to use some of your big damage pieces in the early game. We all know how deadly Reckless Apprentice can be when held for post Dawngrasp turns, but we see Fury Hunter play it out on curve with a wildfire active. He took a step back and recognized that his other plays were really low tempo, while Reckless protects his other minions and creates pressure. No need to get greedy. Making a high pressure play is a good matchup call against Ramp Druid. Against Shaman, Fury makes another good matchup call by choosing to hold his Shivering Sorceress on turn 8, even with one mana left spare. This plays around both Theotar and Mutinous, the latter of which he knows is likely in hand since he saw Dardar Binks play Gorlock Ravager and end on Clownfish. Having extra minions in hand decreased the odds that Mutinous would eat Bran or Apprentice. You do see that one Apprentice gets chomped by the Bulner plus Mutinous combo, but the fact that the other survived was essential to this victory. Bran plus the remaining Apprentice made for the perfect response to a board with Bulner at 8 health and Mutinous at 9 health, the Dawngrasp hero power upgrading twice in one go. Now let's take a look at Fury Hunter vs Leandro Leal on Ramp Druid from start to finish, aka how to win an unfavorable matchup. It all started with keeping Dungeoneer, which is great pressure for a 3-drop as long as you hit the Frost spell. Turn 3 is interesting because he prioritizes Nightcloak Sanctum over Dungeoneer, likely because the 1-1 tokens wouldn't have traded well against the 1-2 on Leandro's board. Getting Sanctum down fast, as with the other proactive locations, is also nice to get the full value much sooner, accounting for cooldown. This is one of the reasons Sanctum is also a decent keep, as well as Cold Case to follow up. On the next turn, because Fury had a skeleton to take a value trade, he can safely play Dungeoneer and still have a minion stick even if Leandro were to play spammy Arcanist. No two health minions on board. Fury plays his Finley on turn 6 as the best timing to look for Magister Dawngrasp on curve. It's a bit painful to do this with Bran and Apprentice in hand, but they don't do much against Druid without the upgraded hero power anyway. When Fury doesn't find the hero card, he knows he needs to continue with the board game plan. He trades a 1-1 just to make room for Amplified Snow Flurry, and crucially, because of the freeze to face, Leandro still cannot hero power to set a minion to 2 health and clean up with spammy Arcanist. On the next turn, he's seen the Topiar from Leandro, so he knows his window to deal minion damage is quickly closing. He makes one last push with the second location and cold case, which is also great for infusing Frozen Touch. After that, while Reckless Apprentice is usually saved for post Magister in the matchup, he plays it for two reasons. Maximizing the chances for the skeleton death rattles to hit face, and using the many targets on board to juice up Mordrush. Multicaster on the following turn is a given to gain back resources, and he finally finds a wildfire, which perfectly activates Sivara. She's especially deadly because she copies an infused frozen touch. With three copies of it in hand, Fury can go for a pure burn game plan even as he falls off board. The next turn, Dawngrasp is found right on time to send as much damage as possible straight to the dome. 
And then, because Leandra knows about the extra frozen touches in hand from Sivara, he feels forced to play Denathrius early instead of for lethal, which Druid usually wants to do against Mage. This gives Fury information that Leandro no longer has access to reach outside of Theotar stealing some damage spells. The high health board state makes for a pretty obvious Mordrush. But it's the response to the huge Devourer where things get tricky. Leandro has access to Attorney at Maw to unfreeze it, and even with reduced stats, it could kill Fury from 4 health. So he's forced to use Solid Alibi to survive while pushing as many Frozen Touches as possible. With Leandro having gained tons of armor from Earthen Scales, Fury knows he needs to find the second alibi to buy enough time. If he could just have one more turn to ping, he can set up lethal. So he goes for Shivering Sorceress into Arcane Intellect and finds the alibi. The Sorceress is for sure happening at the beginning of the turn because it discounts either AI or Cold Case, both of which Fury knows he's playing this turn. Sorceress plus the two skeletons makes for exactly enough minions to infuse his three frozen touches. Those frozen touches are absolutely key to success because they allow Fury to clear board and survive without wasting damage from his pings. And of course, they are also the extra damage Fury needed to push Leandro, who had no more other scales nor Denathrius to heal, to concede. And that's it for this episode and for Mullet Over as a whole. Whether it was just now or from right at the start when I still had my terrible mic and camera, thank you so much for tuning in. And for all your future games, I wish you the best of luck.